I want to introduce you to the semi-direct composite technique. I have found this technique to be very useful in cases with extensive decay in which I do not want to remove healthy tooth structure but need to provide a restoration that will replace the lost tooth structure and return the tooth back to function. In this case study we will be looking at tooth number three which exhibits extensive decay. There are four basic criteria in our restorative analysis. First, we will estimate the remaining healthy tooth structure available for our adhesive bonding techniques. Next, we will check the occlusion on the tooth to determine what forces will be placed on the future restoration, and also to determine if the occlusal surfaces of the opposing teeth will require correction. An evaluation of the periodontal health is done to determine if the tooth warrants restoration and also to determine where the restorative margins can be placed in relation to the periodontal attachment. Lastly, it is critical to understand the pulpal condition. A simple cold test can tell us if the pulp is vital and healthy, vital and unhealthy, or necrotic. In this case study, we tested the adjacent teeth to establish a baseline of the patient's thermal sensitivity. All teeth responded similarly to cold without lingering discomfort. Following our restorative analysis, anesthesia is achieved and the rubber dam is placed for isolation and patient comfort. The peripheral decay and all existing restorative materials are removed. The deep decay adjacent to the pulp must not be removed in order to avoid pulpal exposure. Caries detection dye is used to aid in the complete removal of caries in the peripheral areas needed to develop a seal around the deep caries. In this slide you can see the deep caries dyed light pink, but the dentin around the deep decay is not stained, indicating healthy bondable dentin. Following caries removal, the outline prep is completed and smoothed. This tooth required full occlusal coverage and bevels were placed on enamel margins to enhance bonding surface area. Air abrasion was also performed to enhance bondability to the dentin. Because the mesial decay went subgingival, we decided to elevate the margin of our preparation above the gum line by performing a gingival margin elevation technique as taught by Pascal Manier. Following sandblasting, a matrix band was adapted around the tooth and using meticulous bonding protocols, a thin layer of composite was added to allow for a super gingival finish line for our composite onlay. All dentin surfaces, including the residual decayed dentin, were sealed with bonding agent and covered over with a thin layer of flowable composite. This step is referred to as immediate dentin sealing and is performed to create an established hybrid layer for an ideal bonding surface for the composite onlay. Once the prep is completed and sealed, the rubber dam is removed and an alginate impression is made with the triple tray. To record accurate margins, a monogex syringe was used to deliver alginate around the preparation margins. The preparation side of the impression is immediately poured to prevent distortion using a light body polyvinyl siloxane impression material. This will create an accurate, flexible, and workable model on which the composite onlay will be made. The opposing side of the triple tray is poured with a quick set stone and will be used to establish the occlusion for the composite onlay outside of the mouth. A microfill composite which exhibits great wear properties and flexural strength is incrementally placed on the silicone die and sculpted to the desired shape and anatomy. The opposing cast can be used to establish the occlusal stops on the composite surface. It is then cured with any light curing unit to initiate polymerization. Once the initial polymerization has been accomplished, the onlay is removed from the silicone die, which is easy to do because it is flexible. The onlay is placed into any $20 toaster oven from Walmart to complete the curing process. The time and temperature settings need to be 250 degrees for seven minutes. The oven needs to be preheated and the temperature monitored with an accurate oven thermometer. Now that the onlay is heat processed and ready to cement, 
the rubber dam is placed and the onlay tried in. Contacts are usually perfect and the margins should be nearly closed. The preparation is refreshed with 27 micron air abrasion and thoroughly rinsed. Teflon tape is used to protect the adjacent teeth. The tooth is primed and bonded. The bonder was mixed with a dual cure activator before being applied to the tooth to assure complete polymerization during the cementation process. This restoration was cemented with a heated composite to increase the flowability and eliminate the possibility of a void or gap at the margins. The radiograph of the finished restoration exhibits closed, accurate margins and acceptable contour. There are many benefits of restoring a tooth with a Semurai Direct technique. They include preservation of the pulp vitality, conservation of the healthy dentin and enamel, a decreased cost to the patient, a restoration that's repairable, and a long-term clinical success can be expected.